Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kayla's exhibition. My name is Joyce and I'm the founder of I Am Art House. I Am Art House is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that supports youth development initiatives and emerging artists globally. So we are so grateful um, to be featuring Kayla's work today. And um, I'm just going to share her bio. Um, so Kayla is a Spanish student who is currently studying fine arts at the Universidad Complutense of Madrid in Spain, where when she participated in a drawing competition in her high school, her teacher suggested that she make an exhibition related to the work she presented, um, is presenting today. Um, she drew a refugee child, so she thought it would be ideal to make a series of Middle East war. And from that moment began um, being really interested in Middle Eastern culture and um, with her art, she wants to move people and show multiracial beauty. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it off to Kayla. Thank you. And hello everyone. And thank you for coming to my exhibition. And I want to say thank you to Joyce for giving me this opportunity. I'm very happy and excited uh, because it's my first exhibition. So first of all, I would like to introduce you to some of my artworks chronologically. My first paintings are more dedicated to a specific topic and the rest of them are part of my own study in high school and university with a topic completely different. So I'm going to start with soul reflection. Soul reflection is the piece I made for my high school competition. The topic of this competition was completely free. I don't know why I decided to draw a child, but she became my first inspiration. When I was a kid, I especially drew a lot of portraits of celebrities to practice my technique. I wasn't interested in any type of news and I wasn't conscient about wars or any conflicts. When I searched for the, for the first time the history behind the reference photo I chose, in this case, uh, the child, that woke up in me the initiative to make an art that could tell the stories. The next one is my first oil piece I made in my last year in high school. I had never tried before this technique. So at first I wasn't secure, but over time oil became my favorite technique. I don't have the painting anymore, but I'm excited to show you because it was my first piece. This painting was the beginning of my interest in Middle East war. I started to search and read news about refugees and it became my habit. It was really shocking to read. And when I saw all the pictures in this news, I thought that I didn't want to make any type of art. And I realized that I want to do something that could move people too. Fatih Othembas is the author of my reference for this painting. For this painting, at first, when I was doing the clouds of the sky, I tried to use a sponge to make some texture and volume, but I regret it because it didn't look good. So I started to make it with a medium brush overlapping spots. I painted it for two months and it's the third painting in my Middle East series. The tragic scene belongs to a bombardment in Gaza, Palestine. And the perfect title for this painting was Shattered Dreams because the world always doesn't matter the country, it still the hope and motivations of thousands of people in every conflict. In this drawing, I used color pencils, chalk pastel for the background, 
and acrylic to make some details in the hand represents a victim of explosions. The hand buried tries to survive while it's holding a tool. For me, the scene gives the impression of a strong person that represents hope and faith even in the hardest situations. In this portrait, I used a lumpy paper searching some texture, and I tried to mix four types of charcoals, black, white, brown, and sanguine. I chose this child to draw because I thought the scene was very emotional. And I took the reference from the photographer Niklas Hammerstrom. His name is Aladdin and he was collecting ammunition to sell as metal. He represents all the children that begin to work at an early age to survive and help their families because of the war. It took me about two days and it was a high school assignment for my sketchbook. The next painting took me about three months. Honestly, I suffered painting this because I had to be very patient. My process was really slow and I thought that this piece was endless. But I really enjoy making details a lot. So I decided to finish it as a challenge. It became one of my favorites and I really liked the result. It represents a street of Aleppo in Syria before an explosion. I used acrylic and my palette was based on primary colors because I didn't use a specific tones of color at that time. This painting is very special to me. My mother saw a new of a buried child in August of 2019 while I was doing my artworks for my refugees exhibition. It literally broke my heart. So I decided to paint her and her dead sister in honor of them. Blood Tears is dedicated to the White Helmets, Anas Oldhibi, Mahmoud, Khaled, and Shubhi. I drew with pencil all the scene previously, and then I decided to paint with oil. This one was the second oil piece I painted before Thelia's doll. I tried to mix techniques, so I used a dark brown pastel. While I was painting, I shaved the pastel on the workers when the canvas was still wet. As a result, it looks like the clothes are dirty. I took the reference to do this painting from Eric Bouvet, a French photographer who travels around the world and captures the reality of conflicts. I decided to name the painting Parvana and Her Mother, inspired by The Breadwinner, an animated movie based on the book with the same name from Deborah Ellis. The Girl of the Pearl of Vermeer is one of my favorite paintings. So I decided to make a replica with charcoal for my drawing subject in high school. At that time, I was very satisfied about the result. But when I started university, I figured out that I didn't apply the tonal values correctly. Before I started in fine arts, I was always afraid to add more shadows to my drawings because I didn't want to mess them up. But with the time, I learned that it's necessary to make mistakes to learn and experiment even if the sketches or even the first complete drawing are ugly. I made this watercolor for my technique subject in high school. My teacher gave us the topic of a magic forest. So I decided as inspiration to look at some illustrations. While I was searching, I found a digital drawing I picked 
and uh, and I don't know if my reference belongs to a game or an animated movie, but I couldn't find the original creator of the illustration I took as a reference. In my version, I decided to use salt in some parts of the rocks while I was doing the watercolor. The next portrait is an Ethiopian woman I did in my first year of university. I wanted to make lots of portraits for my sketchbook and she's the first one I made. I really enjoyed the process of it and I did it in oil like almost all of my works. It's a small piece and it took me a week. I did this painting in the pandemic. At that time, I was still in high school and our teachers suggest us to experiment in our sketchbook with a lot of techniques. And one of them was Chinese ink. I decided to make a portrait because I'm comfortable doing faces. It was difficult at first because I never tried Chinese ink before, but I enjoy the process. The model I chose as a reference it's, is the beautiful Ducky Thought. The next portrait is basically part of my own study. From the beginning of my career, I realized that I wanted to represent diversity of features and all kinds of skin tones. So I did a search from models from different countries and I found an Asian man whose face was attractive to me. So I decided to paint him. Jane Bennett. I did this portrait in summer when I finished my first year of university. My painting teacher recommended me to practice the loose brush stroke. So I started to paint portraits that way to get out of my comfort zone. And Jane Bennett is a character from Pride and Prejudice, a book from Jane Austen. I really liked the movie version of 25. So I decided to paint someone of it. When I saw the actress Rosemond Pike, I thought that she was very elegant and sophisticated. So that's the reason why I painted her. Mastani was the most exciting painting to me to, to, me, to make. When I saw Bajirao Mastani from the first time, a Bollywood movie, I was really shocked because I never saw an aesthetic like that before. There's one scene that I really like when Mastani appears in a golden palace to play the guitar to the main character, in this case, Bajirao. So I decided to paint this scene. I enjoyed the process a lot, especially painting the dress and the hat. And I chose oil because it gives me more confidence than any technique. Blue City was one of the first works I did at university. My teacher was teaching us the weight of color. So we had to make a painting with a remarkable color contrast. So I wanted to make my version with contrast, not only with color, I also wanted to create sensations too. I decided to paint Jodhpur, a city in India known for being called the blue city. The red robes of the people creates the illusion of a warm weather, but the blue of the streets looks like they are in an ice city. I did this sketch to practice my brush stroke and change my way to paint. In high school, no one told me how I had to use oil. There isn't a single way or a correct form to paint. 
So I wanted to learn how to do it in different ways. I was focused in realism, but I wanted to experiment more. At first, it was hard for me to force myself to paint loosely, but over time I realized that this type of brush stroke is the most enjoyable to me. The next painting belongs to a project I did to embrace the beauty of imperfections. I focused on pathologies and skin conditions. So I represented a baby with poliosis. I usually apply gesso on the canvas on the wood panel before I start to paint. But in this case, I wanted to keep the texture of the wood. For that project, I did two more paintings, but this one was the only I really like. This still life is part of a test level our painting teacher proposed at my second year of college. We had to pick one of the pictures she gives us as a reference of a lot of still lives, but we could choose our personal still life and paint it in a free way. So I painted my own still life, changing the original color and form of the table. The following still life was my last project of my paintings, my painting lessons for the first semester. I learned a lot with my teacher because she taught us how to really paint. I understood the importance of the previous sketches and the necessity of doing studies of color. The good part of my painting subject was the freedom our teacher gave us to create and express ourselves. This piece is an example of the works I did in that subject. Lucy Pevensey. I did this painting only for fun. I was trying to remember my childhood memories and I realized that I was kind of, of obsessed with the movie, The Chronicles of Narnia. So I decided to paint Lucy Pevensey because when I was a kid, she was my favorite character in the movie. Every time I can go to buy a canvas or a good panel, I usually use watercolor paper as a support because it's thicker than a normal sketch paper. And I apply some gesso on it and I start to paint like I did with this portrait. This portrait is prob probably the one I like the most. I remember when I saw for the first time the Afghan girl from Stephen McCurry, and I always thought that she had the most beautiful eyes I ever seen. But at the same time, I realized that I saw a lot of pain and, sad and sadness too. So I decided to make my own version of Sharbat Gula, and I'm very proud about it. Her ethnicity is Pashtun, so her origins intrigued me to find out more about the diversity in Afghanistan. Damino is a Belgian singer who has an interesting features. I really like his shape of nose and his big eyes, and I never draw or painted before someone with that characteristics. So that's why I decided to paint him. On the other hand, with this portrait, I wanted to experiment with lights and shadows because that's something I struggle a lot. I did Gangubai as a fan art of Ali Abad, one of my favorite actresses in Bollywood industry. I watched the trailer of a movie where she appears and she did a hand gesture that I usually see in India that I really like. So I represented her in that scene. I used a watercolor paper with texture, trying to change a little bit my support painting 
and I painted with the same brush stroke I did in my first paintings. A spirit. The next one is a horse study I did. As you can see, I only do figurative art, especially portraits, but I don't have many animal paintings. I don't usually paint animals because I find them more difficult. So I want to practice more and make more studies about the anatomy to make better paintings of them. In this slide, I want to show you two sketches I did for my drawing subject in my first year of university. That year, I was struggling a lot in that subject because I was nervous and afraid every time I had to draw in every lesson. I never drew with a statue or with a model in front of me, and I only knew how to draw with photos. So I was very upset. Every drawing I made in that class was ugly. So I decided to do it, uh, to do these sketches in my house to feel better with myself and to relax for the pressure I made in my mind. With this, I only want to say that it's okay to make mistakes. We only have to practice more and more to improve in everything we want and take our time to breathe too. I did Holi in, in Bindriban in my second year of fine arts. In my painting subject, we had to make a dynamic composition. So I chose a scene of the Holi Festival because I wanted to continue the topic I picked in my first work I made in that subject. The tones of color that I mostly used in my palette was vermilion, Prussian blue, and carmine. I'm happy with the result because I finally get out of my comfort zone at painting. This one is a sketch I did for the following painting I'm going to show you. We had to make a previous sketch in charcoal to determine a good value of lights and shadows. It helped me to practice the proportions of the woman too, because the pose I chose was very difficult. And this is the result of the previous sketch, but painted in oil. I picked this woman to paint because of her clothes. One of the things I like the most of India, it's the way they see color. Every color has their own meaning and is used for almost everything. In every song, every street, and every festival I saw, there is color. So I wanted to represent that in my painting. I want to experiment in my palette and risk a bit more. So this painting is my first attempt to change. Joe March is the most recent painting I did. For this painting, I bought a big size canvas to improve and challenge myself. There are a lot of artists that start to paint on the white canvas with big, big spots of color to fit everything but I usually start to fit with lines. I don't use grids, even if the canvas have a big dimension because that confused me more. I drew hair with sanguine charcoal and then I started to paint. I don't have the same method to do my paintings because there, there is a lot of ways to do it, but I did this painting as I will do it in my high school days. So I already finished. If you have you. any question. Thank you so much, Kayla. Phenomenal work. And um, I apologize, everyone. The Zoom meeting is actually going to close in about two minutes. So I added another link in the chat 
um, and we'll just relocate to that Zoom meeting. Um, and then we'll finish with the Q&A session. So thank you so much, Kayla. Um, and yeah, we're just going to move to the next Zoom meeting.